Neo time. Got to do these things in batches. And normally I would be remossing this Neo Phoenicia falcata. But um, as you might have noticed if you've watched other videos and if not, then I really appreciate you stopping by, coming to have a look. I hope that you will enjoy the content and thank you very much. But from Lucy the cat and Orchid Garden, I did want to address their two comments. Basically how I care for mine. Now, in previous videos, you've seen a lot of my Neo Phoenicia falcata. She has been in bloom and it's over now. The pretty blooms are gone. And usually, again, this time of year, I do a lot, a lot of mossing. But you can see with these other four Neos, I have the Gojo Fukurin right here. This is the Neo Phoenicia Falcata Set Suzanne. Here's my little Shuteno that also bloomed for me for the first time this year. And here I have Kibana, Falcata Kibana. So I used to grow everything in the Kokodama style, but I am steering away from growing with sphagnum moss as my main medium because I don't want to be disturbing the roots twice a year all the time. As pretty as this setup is, and I really, really appreciate people that do this and are so diligent about it, it's not something I want to keep on doing. So um, today, first of all, the easy part is I'm going to change the little bit of moss I have on top here because these were transitioned over to Lekka semi-hydro at the beginning of spring. So you can see I've got my holes drilled on all of them. The reason they are in tall cups is because of Neo's root growth habit being so long. So the idea was to kind of replicate the height of my Neos and how the roots can grow in. Kibana, of course, having to do something completely different. What's this about? Kibana is not established in the pot, so I'm not even going to try and tug on her. I know she's not. All I saw was one or two small roots in here, and then this one started to grow out and over, so I never saw the rest of it. Shutano is fully established and pot bound in this setup within a question of three months. And my Setsuzan is also not quite pot bound, but I feel resistance and the roots are going into the media. I don't even have to play around with Gojo Fukurin. I know she is not pot bound at all. So what I want to do today is actually have a little chit chat, maybe go into more depth about what I do and what I'm going to do, because I have no idea what I'm up against when I take my falcata out of the pot. Up until now, it's been in this Kokodamas style, but it has a semi-hydro setup on the bottom of this thing with just lava rock. And for the added humidity, because my summers are super dry and you can see my root tips have now just about stopped growing and I I mean, one thing is keeping up with the misting and another and spraying. And another thing is drowning the poor thing because you can see the sphagnum moss is wet and that is still from this morning, which is great. That is exactly what I do. I mist all of them down from the top during the summer months because they all live external. These guys internal, but in my dining room, they're right by the terrace door and that door is always open. So they're not in full sun. I find them too small for the time being to be a full sun orchid, maybe by winter, but they are constantly exposed to airflow. So they get sprayed from the top across the board, as does this one, which lives outside in my climate all year round. So you can see I just, in order to save on moss, I put a little net basket upside down on the bottom and then tie moss and the roots of the orchid around that. But I want to change it. I want to get at the roots here, clean her up, and then decide if I'm what I'm going to do, what size pot I'm putting her in. She is definitely going to go into 
a semi-hydro or a self-watering setup so that I can stop doing what I have to do now twice a year. So this Neo Falcata that I'm dealing with right now lives outside all year round in my climate. And in the summer, it's more in dappled shade, but in the winter, it gets bright sun for almost six hours a day. And my winter sun is not as strong. My winter temperatures during the day, the lowest winter temperatures on a cold day would be like 14 degrees Celsius. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. And those are like cloudy days, so there's no sun. And my night temperatures are known to drop to five degrees Celsius. And this one lives outside all year round. The angle of the sun basically determines when it is in full sun and when it is in shade. So if it stays in its position where it lives all the time, which is my prime real estate, what I call my blooming alley, it's on the bottom shelf tucked away the angle of the sun in the winter comes straight into my blooming alley, full on. I have a protective curtain screen type thing that I protect it with should the need arise. And when I say that like now, the angle of the sun is changing. We are still in the hot part of summer. We're almost at the end of August, but the angle of the sun is already encroaching onto the leaves and everything of my blooming alley and everybody that lives there and that is not good when it's hot so for about five weeks i have not had to lower the little protective curtain thing now i make sure that i double check the temperature of the leaves of all of them living there and i will lower the curtain despite the fact that it's nice and sunny and lots of airflow there is also no humidity to account for at the moment and I don't want to burn the leaves as best as I can. So that makes this one actually in bright, bright shade during the summer months. And I do that basically just because of the location where it lives, the angle of the sun does the rest. And here's another little thing. You see the, the algae on the top. The sphagnum moss isn't that deteriorated. There's nothing wrong with the moss. But I have to change this because of the dead algae on the top there. I don't mind algae on my orchid roots, not one bit, but I don't like the dead stuff. And even though I spray it often with just plain RO water, especially now in the summer, I can tell you that uh, the algae can't take the lack of humidity in the air. And that is dead decaying matter. And that shouldn't be on my roots this time of year at all. So dead and decayed has to come off. And then by process of elimination, all the sphagnum moss has to come off. And I find that a terrible, terrible waste because it's, there's nothing wrong with it down here. And by the growth habit of the roots, I can't just pick off the top and remoss that. But I'm liking what I'm seeing in here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. They all get the same treatment, even though these might be my weaker customers. I'm excluding Shuteno now and Setsuzan. I'm excluding these two. If they get even better by winter, they'll be living outside permanently as well. But the other ones, they are not living outside simply because I, I, I baby them at the moment. They don't need the additional stress of the elements while I want them to get established in this new Lekka semi-hydro setup. Unfortunately, well, no, sorry, let me reword that. Fortunately, this Neo Falcata is doing so well, I can't keep the beautiful little pot series going. So this one is gonna be my little oddball and it will be potted up in one of my, I think 15 centimeters will do it might go up even higher because it has grown gorgeous roots in the last three months. I'm absolutely loving what I'm seeing. But it is quite breezy. 
So I have my RO water here, just to keep protecting the roots that have actually been wet for most of the time since March. These little guys can actually go to freezing temperatures, to zero and below, and they can tolerate a little bit of snow. So if I want to increase my little Neo collection, then space is not an issue for me. I do not need to accommodate them inside. Now, of course, if I get a weak plant, and that is always a problem, sourcing a super strong and well-established Neo is a problem. You can pay a hefty price for some of these, and I do want more, but um, when I see the prices on the internet and I do not see the plant that I'm getting, then I'm very, very cautious, very cautious, because there's a lot of nonsense going on. Look at that. And because of the length of these roots, I put, I potted the other ones into these taller containers. Now, I have to take off all this moss before even considering putting it into self-watering. So this might take a little while and I won't bore you with all of it while I take care of this. I did wire the center of the orchid down before I started to moss it. I, once upon a time, I used to have the nimblest of fingers being able to re-moss, you know, while knitting kind of thing. <laughs> but no, not now. I love the traditional setup. Please do not get me wrong. Some things are meant to be, and there's a reason for it. In my situation, I'm not going to do it anymore. I really, really want to get away from anything organic. I will always, oh wow. So I have a root growing through a hole. Can you see that? Ah, you had to, didn't you? Everything else is absolutely fine and you had to. Oh dear, oh dear. Pero por qué? Will you come out backwards? Because you're only fat on the outside and not on the tip there. Can I pull you back? There's only one way to find out. It had to find that one little hole, didn't it? What is it with orchid roots? <laughs> You've got so much space, you have to go through the smallest part, or what? If I find a dead root, I just snip it back to where it's healthy. The pity about potting these things up, unless you get one that is doing what it's doing now, is you don't see the root tips and that's the big part of and the attraction of Neos, as we well know. So there is a downside to doing what I'm doing. You're not going through, are you? There we go. Now you are. Ugh, I hate doing that. But anyway, it was not going to budge. And as much as time as I'm taking my, on this, I don't have all day. And I've got the Lamborghini coming home soon. Please come off without anything else coming off, please. Look at this. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Thank you very much. All these are new. Beautiful. They have been so used to this environment now for the past three months that I am confident they will do absolutely fine potted up. Yes, this has had more air underneath because of the way it was positioned but I had it in an enclosed space 
so there was no real drying out of the bottom. That didn't actually ever really happen. So we have a little compromise going on here. And in part, what I did with the lava rock on the bottom and then doing the semi-hydro, the roots didn't touch it until very, very late in their growth. Very late, or now in this case, very recently. When I potted it up this way, when I did the kokodama and then put it into with the lava rock like that, these roots by no means had this length. So they have grown into the base of what was a reservoir of their own accord and they will be quite fine with Lekka. My position now is to think, do I also want Ceramis in with the Lekka? None of these have Ceramis. So, yeah, that's what I have to think about. And the reason being, for these guys, I didn't think about Ceramis. I just went with Lekka. I could have put Ceramis because they are very weak and they're small little seedlings. But with this one being so established, I'm also now thinking, should I add Ceramis because it's, it's a big orchid and it needs more hydration. And it would make sense to give it that straight off the bat in the pot. And it's possible that I will mix Ceramis in. I'll have lava on the bottom and then Ceramis in the middle. And there'll be a lot of tapping and jiggling to do because we need to fill this gap. Isn't that pretty? And we need to get this wire out. There we go. Now I'm going to go and really rinse it off really well. Meanwhile, my tap water is atrocious quality. So I have a bowl of RO water waiting for me in the kitchen. The minute that this has been rinsed off, it's going straight into the RO water to take off my awful tap water. Remove that from the roots. These guys love, love, love clean water. I didn't exactly finish my train of thought with the fertilizing, did I? Because I started on something and then went off on a completely different tangent. Let me just circle around on that. I was mentioning I treat them all the same, despite the fact these guys being so small. In the morning they get like I'm doing right now, they get a spray of 300 parts per million fertilized water at 5.8 some days. When I'm filling the reservoir, it's 5.8 pH. And when I'm just spraying them like this, it's 6.3. But 300 ppm for all of them across the board. That doesn't make a difference to me whether they're smaller or they are this size. I'm going to go and rinse her under the sink and I will come back with the paraphernalia that I believe will work well for the foreseeable future. Um, what you see here, that's sphagnum moss. I was concerned about scale, but it is not. It is all just sphagnum moss. So yeah, I'll see you just now in a blink of a dissolve cut. So a good rinse under the tap. Very, very strong power, like the strongest I can get out of it, just to clean up any remnants of the sphagnum moss. If I was remossing, I wouldn't go to these measures. And then to clean up the roots from the very bad quality water that I have here. I, have, I can have a 10 pH and about 380 parts per million coming out of the tap. So no way my roots are gonna stay in that. That's a bowl of RO water just to give the roots back some of the clean water. And look at that. It's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. And yes, we're going to bury them. So while I was away, I was checking for pots. And there's one size that would 
accommodate all the routes because I'm also going to include the aerial routes this year. Everybody is going inside. And then next year she can spill out again if she wants to. But this is the plan. So I'm just going to prepare my microfiber and then see about how much leca is going to go in at the bottom. Okay, so like I always do, I make my little loop here, but it's already crowding the roots on the bottom. So I'm going to take quite a bit out and remove my loop. That's too much humidity down there. As the roots are so low already, that little microfiber down there is going to do the job just fine together with the ceramics in the center. And you can see that with the roots she grew this year, it's already quite crowded in there. But we're going to leave it like that. And now the question is ceramics first. Let's try that. Am I worried about the aerial roots she's grown this year coming to harm and rotting off? Yes, I am. I will never ever say this is always a guaranteed way, a guaranteed method. No harm to any roots are done in the process. <laughs> I will never say that. It is always, always risky to change the setup from something that might be considered airy, although wet, to something that is now completely enclosed. I will make no secret about it. My saving grace in this case, and why I'm still going ahead, is the fact she has so many. And not all are going to die off. And this is not going to work with a ceramics in there first. So we're back to just Lekka. I know this is a faff, and I know I can edit a lot of it out, but sometimes it's also important to see the thought process behind why one is doing one thing as opposed to what initially was the plan. I find it very interesting to know the thoughts of a person when it comes down to how did you come to that conclusion. So for anybody that thinks that this is just tedious. I have all the timestamps in the videos. But I think this is just as important as just getting on with it and editing everything out. So the roots are in. Let me see her from the side. She's a bit high in the pot, but that's okay. Now to do the ceramics part. And yes, this shall be edited into something speedy because there is no need to be watching this. Everybody knows the drill. I'm just going to interrupt here. I'm going to put Lekka down and scoot it underneath the orchid into that hollow. That's where it was airiest of all with that net basket underneath. So I'm going to replicate that with Lekka. So while I'm going to tap this, I'm going to press her down. Not that it does anything, but it will resist her coming up. Okay looks tedious but it must in my opinion it has to be done very diligently simply because I'm not remossing this is completely new and I'm trying to just replicate what she knows and what is familiar with I am now making sure I've got the medium to small lecker sizes just for the top so that if any roots in future want to go in they don't have to fight it. I have a very high suspicion though, and not that it bothers me, that she will be next year producing roots that are gonna go outwards, exactly like what she did this year. Because in February I remossed her and I took all the aerial roots, as you saw at the beginning, the ones that she had back then, and I put them into the kokodama shape and covered them up with moss. And then she grew 
the set of roots that you saw earlier after. I, I'm confident with the fact that's exactly what's going to happen again this time. Am I confident in the fact that the roots that I've just buried are going to make it? No. The reason being they're not used to such a wet environment. They have been sprayed a lot, a lot recently, but not to the point where I can say it's because of what I was going to do today. They've been sprayed because they needed it. So we'll have to wait and see and watch and observe. But I am confident that she's going to make it. She's going to be absolutely fine. The internal roots were gorgeous, absolutely accustomed to a very high moisture environment. So I don't have any issues with that whatsoever. Now I'm not going to fill the reservoir today. It's very breezy and she's going to enjoy her usual dig. Tomorrow I will fill the reservoir and then let it let the wicking start. There's plenty of water. She's had her soak. She's had her drainage, everything. Tomorrow I will start with the normal, just fill up the reservoir. So Neo Falcata, done. Now, what's next? Well, just a quick little touch up on the moss of my other little Neos here. And let's talk winter care. As I mentioned, in winter, everybody lives outside. That's the plan. These don't. Shutano will and Setsusan will because they are established, they are rooted in. My Gojo Fukurin, no way. Not yet. And you can see why. That is not an established root system. It is not dead, but it definitely is not established. So this one will always stay inside with me until it gets established. This little fan has been developing or trying to for the last year and a half. I've lost two leaves this season with Gojo Fukurin. Two bottom leaves. It has grown two leaves as well. So we're still even Stevens with regards to what this orchid is doing in the process of establishing itself. Still waiting on some new roots. But the fact that the roots are doing so well, despite not being established, gives me hope and I shall persevere. So Gojo Fukurin will stay with me. We'll get extra light under the blurple LEDs for growth. And if I don't have the lights on, there's a shelf that has sun because of the angle of the sun. So that we'll get full sun for about four hours a day. A gloomy day, I put the blurple lights on to encourage growth. Same with my Kibana. No different. Stays inside, lives next to Gorgia Fukurin. Has only one root going down into the pot, which is a nuisance because I have a gorgeous root going totally elsewhere. But I'm not going to change that, switch that up. Right now, it, at least it's growing from the crown. And that to me is super important. We're about to get blown away here. I hope you can still hear me. So because I'm outside and these don't live outside for the time being, I am quite radical with my sprayer. By the time we're done, that root will be dry again. The orchid is not in decline. So that's great. Shutano is going to move outside come September. By no means is this orchid ready to sustain the warm wind I'm experiencing right now from the nice environment that it has indoors. Not that my temperatures change because I don't use an air conditioning. So if there's a warm wind, the warm wind will come in exactly in the direction and line of fire of where all these four sit. So they are getting acclimatized to what the outside conditions are while still being protected with some shade. There's a little bit of more respite indoors than outdoors. But come September, when the night temperatures will drop, right now we're not getting much of a drop in night and day temperatures, but that's when I will acclimatize her to outdoors where the days are still like similar to now, but we will drop in temperature about six degrees in September at night. Then that's the acclimatization process. I will begin with Shutano 
for outdoor living for the rest of her time unless she becomes a rescue again. Same with my set Suzanne. Same thing. Despite not being pot bound, it's ready to move outside and will go along with Shutano along the same lines. In winter, I do not water them a lot. I do not spray them from the top. None of that. My semi-hydro setup here was made so that my winter care can be more precise. So if they have to dry out because it's super cold, then that's what it, I can do. I can empty the reservoir and then they can dry out. And then I can just flush because they're not growing. I can just flush once a week if I, if I want to. There is no need. If my winter is super, super mild, then I might flush twice a week just to keep them a little bit, you know, ticking over nicely. But normally, Neos do not need any water, direct water, as they do right now. Absolutely not in the winter, preferably on the drier side. If they are experiencing outdoor conditions, if they are indoors, all that changes, of course, all that changes. There's no, you can't compare uh, growing indoors to outdoors. But drier, definitely drier. My little seedlings here, and I will call them seedlings, my Gojo Fukurin and my Kibana, they will just get flushed more regularly because they are not strong enough to just sit there without any sustenance whatsoever. There will be seaweed included. If they're not growing a leaf or anything, I'm not putting in any fertilizer, but definitely seaweed. But other than that, the outdoorsmen here, they will all be kept more on the drier side and just treated with sporadic flushes. I hope this was not too tedious or boring. I find that there are so many different angles to growing neos, which I wanted to also address because we all do things a little bit differently. We all have a very different climate, different humidity, light conditions, growing methods. This is my preferred method now to have them out of the moss. And I am very, very hopeful seeing how Shutano did and how Setsuan did from the fact that they were very, very weak little plants at the beginning of the season and putting them into Lekka was a risk in my books. So having weak plants perform like this and give two spikes, I'm going to feel okay with Fakata doing what I just did and burying aerial roots. She can prove me wrong. We won't know. Only time will tell. I will keep you updated if you're interested. If I left a train of thought unfinished, if there's anything that I didn't qualify in this video, please, please let me know. Because when I'm concentrating sometimes with my orchids, I can speak but go off on a tangent and then circle back to my own original thought, which can be confusing. It's something I have to work on. I don't work with a script as such. But I hope that the information and the little chit chat that we had today was helpful. And I will definitely, definitely do a follow up video if there are plenty of questions that I left unanswered and um, clarify them in a little Q&A. So let me know. And thank you so much to Lucy the Cat and Orchid Garden. I needed to do a Neo update anyways, but I pushed it forward because if there is interest and in th those videos get priority. Everything else that I do is what I see happening in my collection when it happens. And I really appreciate the interaction and the interest. Thank, Thank you. you so very, very much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next video. And I appreciate your time so very much. Take care. Bye.